What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing One Rainy Day in May, book one in the familiar series by Mark Z. Danielewski. This is Danielewski's most ambitious project yet. He originally planned to release 27 of these volumes, two a year, every six months, or one every six months, uh, starting back in 2015 for the following 13 years. Holy crap. Guys, this is no joke. This thing is heavy. This is like college textbook type paper. That's how heavy this thing, it just falls over on its own. Most authors would take years and years to write a novel that's intricate as this one is, but it, it just goes to show you how dedicated Danielewski is to his craft to want to release 27 of these volumes over a period of 13 years. That's just unheard of. Sadly, there wasn't enough popularity for Pantheon to continue publishing these novels, so we were left with five massive volumes before the series was put on an indefinite hiatus. I'm not going to lie and say that I enjoyed this book the first time I attempted reading it. This is my second attempt and I actually got through it this time. The first time I only made it about halfway through because I didn't like it the first time that I read it. Um, there, especially since it follows nine intersecting story, nine different intersecting storylines, each one is complex as the last. And I, I failed to see the big picture, which is kind of understandable because this is book one of 27. The first book is going to be all about character development, but when I first started, I just failed to see where this was headed. At times, it's very difficult to understand because Danielewski's writing style is so complex. Uh, incomplete sentences, random thoughts, and even a character that uses a form of Singlish, which is Singapore in English, which can be very difficult to translate at times. But I knew that there was a gem in here somewhere, so after reading half of the book, I decided to put it aside, and I didn't pick it up until five years later. I, I bought it the day that it came out five years ago in May, and I started reading it again earlier this year in 2020, and I'm, and I'm really glad that I ended up reading it because it, it, it is a really good book. I knew that the timing wasn't right, and I knew that I would eventually be able to pick it back up again. So as I mentioned earlier, the book follows nine different intersecting storylines. Luther, a ruthless gang leader in California. A scientist named Cass, aka the wizard, who's on the run from a group of people who are after her powerful technology that she created that even she herself doesn't quite fully understand. Jing Jing, a recovering drug addict whose chapters can be really difficult to understand because he speaks a form of Singlish. And those chapters, you kind of just have to go along for the ride and not, not look too deeply into them to try to understand every single word that's said. Schnork, a cab driver who's disputing a car accident. Isindorno, who I believe is an exotic animal smuggler. Oz, a detective who's working crime scenes in California. And then there are three that are intimately connected. Astaire, and Anwar, Xanther's parents, who respectively are a therapist in training and a game programmer slash game designer. And at the core of it all, the main center storyline revolves around a 12-year-old girl named Xanther, who also resides in California, who one day thinks that she's going to pick up a dog for the family, um, but ends up bringing home a small kitten, small cat, that proves to be far more dangerous and much more mysterious than anybody could have imagined. This first book is entirely about character development, which is probably why I didn't completely fall headfirst five years ago when I first started reading it, um, which is understandable because, you know, book one of 27, that's, that's, that's a tall order. Xanther, even though she's only 12 years old, suffers from a lot of health problems. She suffers from um, seizures all the time. She has really poor eyesight, and she does this thing where she, her parents call the question song, where she just goes on a roll and just does not stop asking questions about literally everything. I enjoyed Xanther's, Cass's, and Oz's chapters the most. I thought those were the most enjoyable to read. Um, but at times, you can still you can feel the frustration that Xanther's parents feel, especially when she goes on her question song, one of her tangents, because they don't. Nobody has answers for everything. So when she keeps asking these questions, they're 
at times they're they kind of feel like they want those questions to end even though they encourage them but they still love her all the same and and even i was feeling the frustration of you know how many questions can you actually ask until you get to the the you know it's almost like an in, infinite regress of questions that xanther is asking and at times it feels frustrating to read but that was done really well by Daniel Esky to make you feel that frustration that the parents are going through in order to just try to have some type of answer for their daughter. The only real connection that any of these characters have at the moment to one to one another is that some of them are hearing this cat meowing that Xanthers picked up off the street, which would suggest some type of supernatural power that this cat has because all these characters are separated at different parts of the world. So what did I like about the book? I think the biggest thing is that knowing that if you stick with Danielewski's books, you're you're very highly rewarded at the end. Even even if when you first start it, you feel like you're not going to be rewarded, and it's hard to get through. His writing is on a literary fiction type of status. Um, he really tries to push the boundaries of your mind and make you think very deeply about each one of these characters and his ability to to take nine completely different and unique characters and 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 attempt to weave them all together in the same storyline is is a little breathtaking to be honest because like how could a recovering drug addict from singapore who lives in singapore be be somehow connected to a 12 year old girl that lives in los angeles california who knows what i didn't like probably just the fact that it took me two tries to attempt to read it and I got, I gave it like 400 pages because the, the book is each, each one of these volumes is about 880 pages long, something like that. So I got almost like half directly halfway through it and ended up stopping. Um, since he's my favorite author, I did give him, I did give this series a second chance, but if I had never read anything else by him, if this was some other author that I was coming across for the first time, I probably wouldn't have given him a second chance. So if you're new to Mark Danielewski's books, I can't really recommend that you read this one first. I would recommend starting with The 50-Year Sword, which is a really short book by him, and it's it's a lot less frustrating to read. And after that, I would go to House of Leaves, which is actually my favorite book by him. But I, I would recommend reading The 50-Year Sword first, just so you can get a feel for the type of writing style that he has and how he approaches books. And then move on to something more, a little bit more complicated like House of Leaves because that one isn't quite as linear of a storyline. But I promise you, if you are as dedicated to reading books as Danielewski is to writing them, every one of his books are completely magical and just leaves you with a sense of like wanting to know more about the the story and just the world that you live into. It's, it's, it just expands your mind on a level that I've never come across with any other writer. Taking everything into consideration, I'm going to be giving volume one a four out of five. I'm told that after book one, the story really starts to pick up since book one is all about character development, and I'm really excited to see where this story is going. I am really happy that I was able to give this series another chance, and if you're finding yourself in the same situation that I was, I promise you if you stick with it, you won't regret it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next book review video. See you later.